Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. What you're looking at right now is Monk's active tile triggers in Foundry VTT powering a robust menu option using the show dialog action to power what I think is the most powerful landing page configuration tool in Foundry today. This is coming out in a future release of our landing pages module, and I want to show you the power of the show dialog option right now on automating Foundry. To get started, let's go over the basics of the show dialog action with Monk's active tile triggers. When you use show dialog, you choose the type of confirm or alert, and then we'll fill out our title and content. We'll notice that we have on yes go to and on no go to when we have a confirm dialog box. This allows us to go to specific landings within our tile. So we'll want to add those landings as well. It's useful to set any of these landings as stop when reached in code, because otherwise when someone closes out of a dialog box without selecting an option, they're going to continue down the list of actions until they get to either a stopping point or they just execute everything within the tile. So you might not want that, particularly if something depends upon the input for a dialog box. And once we have our tile set up, we'll go ahead and demonstrate the difference between these two types of dialogue. Now, when I activate this tile by clicking on it, a example dialog shows up, and this is our confirm type, where we have a yes and a no. Alert is just a check mark. This is usually used for conveying really important information that needs to be seen. We can do even more powerful things with show dialog by using HTML, like this text input field. A great feature of Monk's Active Tile Triggers is the ability to use HTML with your show dialog. So that's what's powering this particular form right here. Don't worry if you're not familiar with HTML. I'm going to leave example templates that you can use in the comments, and I'll give you some great resources for making your own dialog boxes. I've got this tile set up fairly simply. We have an alter action for actually editing our drawing, and then we have this dialog. The dialog uses that HTML formatting I was mentioning earlier, and we have named the input here demo text. And that's going to be important for our alter action. That name corresponds to the value of the variable that we are going to be using for that alter. And we're going to use this on yes to go to continue so that if someone closes out, we're going to stop the actions. Then we use value.demo text in curly brackets to actually get that information. So pause now if you want to copy down the tile and dialog. Our next demonstration is a color selector. This one's really fun because you actually get to see the regular foundry color picker. And then when we hit yes, we're changing the text color of this drawing. We can change it to anything we want using RGB values or an actual color picker. It looks very impressive and is very intuitive, but is super simple to set up. Once again, we're using our regular GM on click and we're using an alter action that's going to be taking our variable, this time named hex code. When we look at the show dialog, it's very similar. However, we have put in the input type equals color to signify that we want a color picker type of input rather than just a dialog box. And we have once again named this to hex code so that our alter action is going to read that variable instead. So pause now to copy down these details. Our next example is multiple choice. And this one is pretty interesting where we have these different options and they're passing specific values onto another command. So when we open this up, we're again going to see that regular on click tile. And then we have an alter that's still taking that variable. But when we look at the dialog, we're using a slightly different kind of form. We have the input type set to hidden, and then we're using separate button elements within the form. And within that, we're setting this ID for a variable. You can use whatever ID you want here, as long as it's unused. And we're naming it multiple choice, so we can call it later. Then we have established each of these buttons to on-click 
change the value of the variable, which is named multiple choice, to something specific. So here we've changed it to like, and then we have named the button option one. So that's what displays when we open it. And then our other options have subscribe and multiple choice as their variables with different names. So we can pass those on to the alter action to have those specific values. This can also be really powerful because different actions can actually take these variables and read them intelligently. So for example, if we had the switch tile image, we could set those buttons to have a value of next, previous, random, or specific numbers. And this might be a little more robust than redirecting to different anchors or landings to apply those different effects. So it's an interesting ability to have in your back pocket. Now, if you wanna copy this tile, you can pause the screen to copy down this form and the tile actions. Our final example here is going to be putting it all together and having a menu. So you see when I open this up, I am clicking on the text and then it opens up a separate dialogue where I can change my text. And it's gonna return me back to that main menu and I can continue repeating those actions as much as I want. Say if I'm not happy with my first input, or I can switch to a different option, such as the text color here, and I can alter that as well. This is where things can really start getting crazy. This is how you can build entire UIs within your active tiles so that you don't have to have 20 different separate tiles to control all of the different elements of your scene. You can instead nest them inside of intelligent dialog boxes to make things easier for yourself. Now, when we open this up, it's again an on-click GM tile. And then the main dialog that we're gonna be looking at is this topmost one under main menu. And within this one, we have a slightly different type of dialog. We're going back to that form with the hidden input type. Once again, we've got an ID established here. And this time we're using dialog redirect because it's nice and descriptive. Similarly to the multiple choice form, that's what we're going to be changing every time we click on a button or changing the value of rather. What's really important here is that we have the name go to, and that is something that active tiles uses in order to determine where we're going next. You can see the language here is on yes, go to on no, go to. Both of these are go to. So actually when we change this, if we leave it as a confirm and we've clicked a button, it's going to go to that landing regardless of whether we pick yes or no. So we're using the values here to indicate the particular landings that we're going to. So text input, color input, et cetera. And that's how you can really start weaving in these UI elements and creating menus for your tiles. Let's go ahead and pause now if you wanna copy down this general form and the tile actions. Then let's take a quick look at these sub menus. They're basically the same thing that we've already gone through with the text input and we have text continue as our anchor instead. And then we have the color dialog that we use for our color selector. And these are going to color continue and text continue as appropriate. We've also added this jump to landing to go back to the main menu in order to restart things. Now that we've looked at some examples, let's dive into how to create your own custom dialogues. My first tip would be use a code editor like Visual Studio Code here or Notepad++ so that you can have HTML form highlighting and auto indentation. This is really useful for being able to tell what all is inside your form or particular aspects such as the buttons. When you're done, you can just copy and paste this directly into Foundry and you're good to go. I would also highly recommend that you keep W3Schools or a similar HTML resource handy. I've done all of these dialog boxes without having much of a background in HTML, CSS, or coding in general. I know enough to be a little dangerous, but I need resources a lot, and W3Schools has taught me a lot about forms, form elements, and all the different things you can do with them. I never would have even tried the color picker without W3Schools, for example. So keep this handy and use it as a reference when you are creating your dialogues. Lastly, also keep Crow's Foundry Guides for the Monk's Active Tile Triggers Wiki handy. This is especially useful if you're doing alter actions because you can see all the different properties 
that you can change about different types of entities, whether that be actors, drawings, etc. So we can see they're all laid out really nice and neatly. And this is just an invaluable resource when it comes to knowing what you're referencing or changing in Foundry. You can figure it out by some trial and error and some use of the console, but this is really a time and life saver. Once you've mastered all of those elements, you can get really crazy and make these robust dialogues like I've made for this landing page configurator. We have different landings for theme selection, the different themes themselves, etc. And I have this very large main menu type of form that prompts the user to go to the specific areas. And from there, we go into other dialogues where we are creating specific changes. If we open up one of these submenus, we can see some of the things that I picked up from W3Schools. Those being the field set and legend tags that I use to create nice labels for the preset values on these particular dialog boxes. So let me close out of that and we go into the text configuration. We can see that there's this nice area that says presets and divides those out separately. So these are some of the extra steps that you can add in to create really powerful menus. Now that we've seen a bit of a demonstration, I'm gonna leave you with this footage of using the configurator in action while I talk about why you might wanna use this. This is a particularly advanced setup of these menu applications with the show dialog option. You probably don't need to have something this robust, but at the same time, this whole setup, this whole tile works off of tags. So I can deploy this on any scene that I'm using the same tags for, and it will just work. That doesn't matter whether it's this game or another world or a whole other instance of Foundry. As long as I have a macro with the tile set up, I can reuse this over and over again. So there's obvious applications for someone who's creating content and distributing it to users who want to be able to tweak it. But it's also really powerful if you as a DM like to have controls that you can change on the fly or reconfigure and reuse for different scenes. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Automating Foundry. I hope that you found the tools that are available with the show dialog option compelling and interesting. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you think I missed anything when it comes to show dialog and HTML with Monk's active tile triggers. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you also get access to every modular system and scene that we've ever made, including these landing pages in the next release of the BaileyWiki Advanced Foundry Modules. Once again, this has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching. Happy gaming and have a good one.